Welcome back, everybody. Hey, we got an amazing show. This is Real Estate Answer, Real Estate uh, Uncensored. I can't say much the name of my own show, Gene. <laughs> I'm pulling. You got to get it together, uh, McDaniel. I know. I am pulling a Johnson on that. Uh, but we have got a great show. We, this is where you guys get all your questions answered and whatever the fuck Matt always says that makes it sound really cool and sexy. No clue what he always says. But we're back. We're live. Johnson is on a mental vacation today. He has taken some time for himself, which he needs. We all need a little bit of personal time. I got the legend, the myth, the man, the fellow podcaster, and the evil bald ninja, Mr. Gene Volpe, riding shotgun rider, die with me today. How are you, my friend? What up, McDizzle? How you doing? Doing well, man. I am doing well. We've got a lot of stuff to cover. We are going to talk lead gen. We're going to talk technology. Are the homes watching me? What can I do to protect my clients' interests? Also, how can we leverage this stuff to do even more effective, uh, te you know, technologically driven lead generation, which is going to help you work smarter, not harder. Uh, something that you've talked about a bunch of different times in regards to kind of the, the world that you live in, you know, and all that stuff. But I, uh, First, I want to get into a question for you. We just got a question right off of Facebook from the lead gen script and objections. Um, and I want to quickly bring it to uh, to everyone and say, okay, this, there's a gal, she's asking, uh, who's running Facebook ads? How many how many ads should I be running? And what what is what should be the cost of the ads? Now, I am not a Facebook ad guru, not in any way, shape, or form, or any universe. Uh, what would you say, Eugene, how would you answer said question? question well let's talk first about how much money you want to burn right okay you mean spend no invest. i meant burn you meant I'm burn. Saying burn okay here's, burn. Why I, here's why i say it that way i like to always if you if you do the right things and you handle it the right way and you target the right people and then retarget the right people and people are looking there's so many variables right those then your your marketing will work. And yeah, here's another piece of it too. You could ha be the best lead generator and best advertiser in the on the planet. But if you're getting leads coming in and you're waiting three days to respond to them mm -hmm. and you are terrible on the phone, um, then you're gonna, your ROI is going to be zero, right? Your ROI is going to be zero. So what mm -hmm. I mean by that is there's so many points to the advertising thing, so many different failure points during your advertising process that you have to be ready for it not to work for the first two or three months. So what I always say to people is let's pretend that you had some money. And while our, um, while this is obviously not our goal or our plan, but let's say our expectation was that you were going to give me that money and I was going to set it on fire. Uh, what's the, no where's, what's that number for you that in, in a three month period you would know I was burning your money but you would be still be able to sleep. So in other words, what can you afford up front to burn? Now, the reality of it is, is that in three months, we should be able to pull a couple leads out of that, right? Hopefully. And, well, hopefully, for sure. Not really hopefully. It's going to happen. It's just a matter of if they're qualified, if they're ready to pull, and if you're good at what you do. So if all those things line up, we'll, be, we'll pull leads that'll, that'll make that money worthwhile. But what I would say to people is think of it like the first 45 days is almost like a Petri dish test. You're going to, you're doing a science project. We're going to figure it out. And a lot of those other things come into play there too. Like how many ads should I run? Uh, let's, let's design a campaign first. It might be four. It could be 18. It depends on what you have going and who you're targeting. Are you going after buyers? Are you going after sellers? Are you going after FISBOs? Are you going after putting people in your downline? There are four different types of campaigns that might have multiple ads in each campaign. So we're talking 16 ads, right? So just talking about what I just said, that's why I think it's funny when people go, you charge that much for Facebook advertising? Dude, you know how much goes into the back end of that when, when you're doing it right? There's a lot of moving parts. We didn't even talk about the graphic design. We didn't talk about editing video. We didn't talk about creating landing pages. We didn't talk about going into Facebook advertising and making sure you have the right setup so that when, when you pull a lead in, you get notified. And when you get notified, there's an automatic process in place that you make that phone call because you need to get that lead 15 minutes prior to when they actually give you the info. You know what? You got a good point there. I ran an ad, and I didn't use you. Slap on hand. Bad Greg. Damn you, Greg. I know. You must motherfucker. You know? But here's the thing, is that when it comes to the the lead notification, so I, I was just dicking around one day. I put 100 bucks behind it. I just wanted to play. And I said, okay, I don't want to get views on the video. I want to get messages. And it was talking about this inventory that's going to be surging in our area. And so I started doing these videos. Then we did this one video and pushed it out. I got eight 
messages, right, off this one ad. Now, mm -hmm. for 100 bucks, eight messages, 10 days. That's almost one a day. Pretty good, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Was that? Yeah, yeah. I thought you were. I thought you assumed that was yes. Yeah. Oh, pausing for dramatic effect. No. Uh, <laughs> so, so what, almost one a day, eight leads. But here's the problem. I didn't know where the conversations were going, so I would get emails every once in a while. But I have to go back to my email, my my notification on Facebook, and check them, and then physically respond to them. Do they went days without a response? So guess what? Yep. They all didn't respond lost to them. me again. I lost them hundred percent. So there's a couple things there. So number one is you, in, in most cases, there's got to be, a, there's an intermediary. Like we used to use Zapier to actually play in between our, there's a couple different ways to do it, right? So if you do the lead ads on Facebook, I think it notifies you right away. I haven't messed with that in a little bit. My team does that. But the other piece of it is if you create an ad that points to a third-party landing page like Instapage, there needs to be a third party, fourth party for that matter, in between Facebook and your inbox that will cascade those messages as they come through in real time. So if you don't know that exists, and I can tell you that because I did that by accident when we first started this years ago, I threw the ads up and I'm like, why am I not getting anything? And I go log in and there's like 14 leads in there. And I'm like, wait, why oh. isn't this working? Yeah. And somebody was like, hey, dipshit, they don't force, they don't for send them to you. You have to actually set, enable outside of notification. I'm like, ah, so Damn there's, it. there's a lot of elements to that that could hinder the process, right? And here's the other thing. So, uh, all right, let's, yes. let's go through. Are you ready? You ready for this? Yeah, I'm ready. Go, go, go. go right. yeah. So there's, there's a couple different things. If you ask for a ton of information and your give back is weak, you're probably not going to get any leads. I'll explain a little bit better in a second. Okay. You're probably not going to get any leads, and the ones you get, are going to be willy nilly. So, in other words, well, let me let me see if let me just, let me try it a different way. Let me try this okay. a different way. You're confusing Greg, me. I, said, I, kind of, I kind of know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm going to take it another route. So let's go this route with it. Greg, I'm going to say to you, I am going to give you a five thousand dollar Visa gift card. Okay. In exchange for your, in exchange for your email. Uh, will you give me your email for that? Yes. That's a, that's a awesome reward for very little information. So I'm going to take it a step further. I'm going to give you a $2,500 gift card, or let's say the chance to win a $2,500 gift card. If you give me your your name, your email address, and your phone number, you still in? Yeah, I give that stuff away for free anyways. Okay. So let's talk about for free. I'm not going to give you shit, but I want you to give me your name, your phone number, the social security number and bank accounts of of Matt's three obese children, your That's home address, and and information about your girlfriend that she probably wouldn't want you to give away. And in exchange <laughs> for that, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a downloadable PDF that tells tells you my favorite types of gum. Are you good with that? <laughs> Go fuck a duck. No exactly. way. Exactly. <laughs> so you see the, the you see the disparity in scale, and yeah. there's a happy medium in there somewhere. So you have to figure out where. If you're giving away $250 worth of free shit and you're asking for an email address, most people will sign up, but 99% of those people aren't going to be ready to buy a house. Does that make sense? Makes total sense. So if I'm asking for a tiny bit of information for a decent giveaway, there's going to be a lot of chasing the cat around, right? With so we no don't want result. those. So those are the leads you don't want because they're, 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 they're just in it to get what's in it for them, not what's right. in it for you. 100%. And so because it's a, there's an easy barrier of entry there. So if, if I make the barrier of entry a little more difficult where I say, okay, Greg, I'm going to give you a $250 gift card if you give me your information knowing that this is a real estate ad, right? You got the, Let's add that in there. So I'm going to give you a chance to win a $250 gift card. And I'm probably using terrible examples of what the giveaways are going to be, but you're getting my point. I'm getting your and point, I, but yeah. I want you, But I want you to give me your, your email address and your phone number, and also the approval for me to call you within 24 hours to have a conversation. You're at least going to think about it a little bit harder than the other one, right? You still might give me that information. Yeah, I, I think I would. Um, and that's if I was remotely interested in what the offer was. So I'm like, you know, okay, I'll have a conversation with you. No problem. Like I signed up for a company, and uh, they asked to have a conversation with me the next day. And I was like, ah, then I'm like, well, what's it going to hurt? It's a 20 minute conversation. Okay, sure. Let's do this. Right. 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 But you, but I think you can sort of see, can't you see there where 
I your leads could go from a thousand phone calls and nobody setting a meeting mm -hmm. to four phone calls and one of them setting a meeting. You see the difference there? I would I would do that all day long. I I've gotten to the point where people used to brag about, and you know this. Oh, I get a thousand leads a day, or a thousand right. leads a week, or whatever else. But you have to understand, I've said this a thousand effing times. A lead, an online lead, air quotes, is not a lead. It is a response to an ad. That is all right. it is. There is something there that they wanted and saw value in their life that they wanted that they took action on. Does not mean that you are the almighty, you know, benevolent you know, real estate agent that you believe that you are, they don't give a fuck about you or what you're, what you're offering. They just got what they wanted. They got their gift card. They got their money. They got their chance at something. But now it's up to you to build that relationship. And that's where agents fall on their face consistently because they don't get on the phone. They don't pick up the email. I had a conversation with a lady who's going to be on our show. She's a psychologist. Uh, I, think, I think it's a psychologist. Anyway, she's a very smart and talented woman. Um, and she's, you know, she was telling me that a lot of real estate agents that she works with will not go and make a phone call to a, to a client or a prospect. They'll go when they know the person isn't home. And that's the problem. That, that sounds like me. <laughs> it actually sounds like me. I hate talking to people on the phone. I really do. But 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 if you want to make your money, that it is. But if you want to make your money, there's that you got to get in the trenches, right? The faster the phone call, the more you have to give, and the, the more response, the more response driven you are, and the more you care about what their emotional needs are, the, the quicker. You know, there's so many variables to all this stuff. So, but I want to go back to the the thing I was just telling you. In in the different types of marketing, you can also see where. I could say to you, Greg, I'm getting you a thousand leads at four cents per lead, right? And you're saying, mm -hmm. that sounds pretty good, Gene, right? It does. Well, in but theory, it does, yes. In theory, well, let's explain because what you just said, I'm giving you a thousand phone calls to make for which you, <laughs> somebody's saying I'm going to need to watch the replay. That probably means I'm talking too that's, fast. Or that's Ramon. Ramon says he wants to watch it in the replay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so uh, with a thousand leads for four cents a click, it sounds great until you realize that you're chasing a thousand people on the phone for 92 hours and getting nothing out of it, right? Mm -hmm. Versus I say to you, all right, with the cost per click is going to go to $33 a pop. So in other words, or the cost per lead, I should say, is going to go to $33 a pop. Well, you're going to go, holy shit, that's scary. But if I'm qualifying those leads up front and they're better leads and you pull a listing out of one of those $33, all day. Because there's right, so you get you get my point. So it might mm -hmm. be a thousand leads at a cent per. Sounds like a great number. We're not talking about all the logistics behind it. Or twenty five leads at thirty dollars per. But there's a hell of a better chance you're going to land two of those. Which one are you taking? I'm going to take the 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 lesser of the leads, the higher the quality. It's like it's like dating a bunch of fives, or you know with with the possibility you get to chase them around. Or you can just go date like a seven and be like, sweet, I'm super pumped. I'll take her out on a Friday night. You know, you've got to be, it's got to be, it's got to be your mindset's got to shift. It's not quantity, it's quality. Like I have quality in my life. You know, I, back when I was single, I dated a couple of girls, but I got a solid, rock solid girl in my life. Now I wouldn't trade her for the world, right? But some people, they don't see it like that. They see that, you know, whatever's, everything's greener on the other side of the fence. So they could be getting the four, five, six, ten leads that are at a higher dollar value, but they're like, dude, Bob at Remax, that fucker is getting a thousand leads. I want to be like Bob. You got to be like, no, bro. Bob's running around chasing his tail when you can sit back, relax, and slow down these people and just chill. It's It's a it's a paradigm shift. It's a mental shift. And then it goes into the relationship building aspect of this where you've really got to get down and you've got to distinguish yourself uh, from everyone else in the marketplace. I know a good friend of ours, a good, you know, good friend of the show, Miss Veronica Jones from Texarkana, Texas. I got to do that every time I say that. Um, <laughs> but she does. I wish absolute... they would make up their mind. Who? Who? Texarkana, Texas. Is I know. Is it Texas or in Arkansas? Arkansas. <laughs> I'm sorry, Veronica. I went total ghetto. I, mean, I went total hillbilly on you. But my point is, is that like she does an absolutely phenomenal job of building relationships, and she sets appointments. I mean, she tells me her numbers, and when she become, when she decides to become a real estate agent, which you should, bitch, become a fucking agent. She she will d just decimate the, the she's rest not of an the agent. Agents. She's an agent. No, dude. No. She she's a VA. Well, she's a, 
she's working on you know she's she's a lead generator but my point is is this is that she goes out personally and meets with each lead personally at their houses and she locks them down and that's what every agent like we just talked about in the beginning of the show people are so afraid to go out and meet with people one on one but she sits there explains it to them shows them why they should or why they should work with her brokerage sets up an appointment and then guess what the agent doesn't follow up with the set up appointment it is infuriating and i have told her to come out here and work in california because i would hire her in a nanosecond she would make millions of dollars and she could live in a high-rise penthouse condo in uh, downtown san francisco i mean it would be easy but look she is she is a realtor she's responding she is a Just realtor but she, she can't hang, she can't work with her she can't work her with her license in the full realtor capacity lots oh, of story behind that okay okay i'm taking your word for it my man it's ridiculous. I, in Veronica, if you're listening to me, get your shit together, woman. Get your house in order and start selling real estate. Texarkana, Texas. Texarkana, Texas. But so the lead, so the step one is generating the leads with technology. Step two is following up with them. You know, building the relationship. So, I mean, let's talk about video. Let's talk about text messages. Let's talk about, you know, emails. Let's talk about, you know, in-person meetings. What have you directed and encouraged your clientele to go out and do when it comes to follow-up and building that initial relationship and continuing that relationship growth? Uh, video. So I'm a big fan of – it doesn't – here, you got to be careful. It's like I don't want somebody to listen to this and start doing this and piss people off. I'm a big fan of sending the video um, text message, but yeah. there's some compa there's some compatibility issues when it comes to you know if I if I'm on a Droid and I send it to you on an Apple, there's always some goofy stuff that goes on. So there there's ways around it. Like one of the things I'll do is I'll take a quick video on my phone if the message is important enough, and then right from the right from my photo library, I can upload it to YouTube as a private private video. Mm -hmm. And so then I'll send you the link to the YouTube video and say, hey, Greg, real quick message for you. Take a look. And all you, you click the link. It takes you to my YouTube video. It plays for you. No big deal. It's, it's a little couple extra steps. But for me, it ends up being for an important message. You know what else I like too, Greg? I like what you do. And I know Matt hates it, but the <laughs> audio file. You know, you know, he hates that, right? I know he, he hates it. hates it. God, he, he hates it. it. I don't get it because I think I'd rather so much rather hear you for 15 seconds than actually have to read your text. Oh God, I'm dyslexic. I spell shit all the times and I got big thumbs. I mean, this is a, it's a horrible scenario for me. Yeah, I like, I don't mind that. I like it a lot. And I think, but again, one of those things is you got to sort of follow your audience and find out who the hell was I just having this conversation with? Well, it might've been you last week or oh, somebody on the be. show, but it was like, how do you, I'll think about it while I'm talking about it. Oh, um, Oh, I know it was Monica Shea. So we were having a conversation about best methods of follow-up when you're when you're creating a process for listings, buyers, sellers, all that stuff as an agent. And she said, like, I, I just find that some people want to be called, some people want to be texted, some people want to inbox, some people want these five things. So I said, I my thing was I say pick three that you find are the most common. So in your world as a real estate agent, Greg, if I was to tell you the top three methods of communication that you think your clients like, what would they be? Um, Phone, text? Depends. So there's, a, there's already been a, a somewhat relationship made. Like you've reached out and you're going to say, hey, I'm going to follow up with you, talk to you in a couple of days kind of a thing. Or Gene Volpe just came into my inbox and I'm going to re respond back out to you. Which one? No, no, no. I'm talking more. There, I guess there's two sides of that. But let's talk about more on the on the, the ladder so in other words you've established the relationship because the conversation we were t having was when you go to, out to a listing presentation when you set expectations on communication what types of process should you have in place because we were talking about expanding and building teams so if you have 30 clients in a month think about how hard that is to keep them all in the loop with 30 different types of communication methods that they all require it's impossible you, you, right you, you, it's never going to happen Right. Um, so what, but her, her thing was, so I said, you got to create a process that says, all right, when I'm out at the listing, this is, these are the three ways I communicate all messages and updates you're going to get from us come from my assistant and you're going to get in your Facebook inbox on text message and a voicemail, all three. Now, if you said to me, dude, I'm not going to hear any of that. So it's useless to me. But if you sent me a direct message on Instagram, then I get it. All right. I may make that exception for you because it's important but for the most part keep your eyes open for the other stuff too because that's where we typically send it out so in other words 
when you get to a point where you want to scale your team and scale your business, if you have 40 different communication methods for each each individual, you're never, never going to be able to grow to scale. You can't do it. Well, it's like anything so, else. I mean, you don't go to Long's Drugs at 2 a.m. and complain that they're not open. I mean, they tell you exactly when they're going to be open. Is the store hours. It's how they run their business, and it's the exact same thing that you run yours. Hey, Gene, it's going to be an honor to work with you and your family when we're helping you guys transition from your home to this home to another home. You know, this is how we communicate, so keep your eyeballs. Um, we do, you know, Facebook messages, text messages, and uh, phone calls or emails or whatever the hell you're going to say. You know, so one of those three should reach you. Uh, which ones? Which one you do predominantly? You know, out of those three, do you work with? It's not like a. Would you like us to send us to, send you to Instagram? Would you want a carrier pigeon? Do you want us to stop by and say hi to you? Would you like a handwritten note? Fuck that. And that's not how you work. You operate your business. This is not a hobby. This is a business. So decide on how you're going to communicate with your clients, dude. I tell every one of my clients when I show up, hey, Gene. I look forward to meeting you. I'm going to probably show up pretty casual because I'm a pretty casual guy. Is that Will that bother you? No. I, every single client of mine says, no, I'm a super casual person too. Yeah, let's do this. But I tell them how I'm going to operate. I set the precedent. And then there's no problem from that moment forward. It's the, it's the issue is that people get so nervous about offending the client or not communicating perfectly, perfectly with that client or prospect that they trip over their own tongue. And then they're like, oh, well, whatever you want, man. I'll just do whatever you want. No. Just sit down and tell me you're going to run your business. And I've had no problem with that whatsoever. Me personally, I would probably say, you know what? What's your best cell phone? I'm just going to go ahead and, go and uh, we're going to communicate via text because I know a lot of people are busy these days. Uh, what, who should I text? Uh, Mr. or Mrs.? Oh, well, text my wife. You know, I'm always in meetings. Okay, no problem. Ma'am, what's your phone number? You know, and then I get the text. Boom, we're off and running. I mean, it's that simple, but people make it so hard. It, it Sometimes it hurts my head, honestly. Um, I can imagine that it would. You wouldn't listen to a word I just said. What? Me? me? <laughs> no, no, no. It hurts your head. I, no, no, no. I'm saying I can imagine that it would hurt your head. I Trust me. I, I, can, I understand dealing with people, especially in the heightened, in their heightened sense of being nervous and about spending the most money of their lives or selling the biggest asset they've ever owned. And they and you're talking about, I'm going to text you. Well, I don't even have a phone. How are you going to text message me? Like, it's just more stress added on top of stress. So I can imagine that it becomes. But here's the thing, too. You've gotten to a spot where you're unique in that you've, you've gotten comfortable with your business so that you're okay with the walk away, right? Yeah. Like, I'm coming dressed the way I come dressed. And if I said to you, Greg, you ain't getting my business. Unless you put a suit on, okay. you're going to do a couple of things. You're going to analyze real quick and you're going to go, it's a $400,000 listing. That's not how I roll. Or it's a $4.2 million listing. I'm going to put a suit on. You okay if I don't have a tie? Right? Like you're going to have to judge in your world if you want to take that route or not. But you're still comfortable 95% of the time that you can walk away from that business and you'll still live. No, I'm uh, I'm a hundred percent confident that I can walk away from the business and still live. But here's the thing: I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give in to someone's want, need, or desire on how I, they feel I should run my business because it makes them feel better. Fuck right. you, fuck the horse you ride rode in on, it, and I'm out. And I'm not gonna even think twice about it. Besides, I hate four point some odd million dollar listings ninety nine percent of the time because one, it's a lot more, it's a lot harder work. And two, the, the the affordability up there is much much thinner, so it takes yeah. a lot longer to sell. So, if a 4.2 million list guy goes, you know, I'm just not comfortable without you wearing a suit. I say, okay, I totally understand it. I'm not the right agent for you. Thank you very much. Go with God. But you know, if a go million dollar God. listing, go with God, my child. Go with God. Um, but if you have a million dollar listing goes, hey man, I need you to at least put on a polo shirt. You know, this is a million dollar home. I'll be like, okay. That's cool because I know I can sell this thing in a nanosecond and make thirty thousand dollars. Do you see? Yeah. So it, for sure. It, it, again, it, like you said, it's about judging, right? And make, making your decision on okay, is it worth my time to pander to somebody's wants and needs? Now, I'm not saying that like 
in, in that in a negative way. I'm just saying, like, how do you want to run your business? Do you want to be jerked around like a dog on a chain? Or do you want to lead the pack and say, this is who I am. Welcome to my world. You know, I'm glad to work with you, but I, don't, I want your business, but I don't need your business. Do you understand the difference? And I say that to clients all the time. And they look at me like this, like, a, like what did he just say to me? Mm-hmm. He wants yeah. my business. I don't need it. Oh, okay. I get it. That's cool. And we're off and running. Well, you become the carrot at that point too. There's a there's a there's a psychological element of this. Yeah, buddy, you can't afford me. And that you, yeah. and somebody goes, oh yeah, watch this. I'll afford you. What's it cost? You know what I mean? Like, you know, I, I, if I can't have you now, I want you more, right? It's exactly right. And I'll also say to the people, you know what? I look forward to meeting with you today. I'm going to be coming pretty casual. Hope that's hope that's okay with you. I'm a casual guy. And you know what? I look forward to seeing if I'm going to be the right agent for you and if you're going to be the right client for me to see if we're going to mesh well together. And right off the beginning, I'm, I'm knocking them on their heels a little bit, just going, whoa, this guy's not going to like beg me for the listing. He's going to interview me. Honey, we got to clean the house. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's it totally changes the dynamic, but it comes back to the mindset of the agent not being afraid to lose the business. And if you lose it, it, it's fine. It meant, what, it. You weren't meant to work with that person anyways. Well, remember, we talked about this in so many episodes ago um, where you cross over in your business at some point from, I need the money, please buy my service, you know, or, you know, in your case, please pay me the commission, to... I'm really good at what I do, and you can, and I can help you. And so, mm-hmm. if you don't see that, I'm sort of okay with it. And so that the that air of uh, of need and you know uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not need, but heavier than that. Need, uh, like, want, desire, uh, must yeah, have, but and not, crave. Yeah, all those things that becomes less. It's less of a big deal at that point. So like my confidence level grows when I get to a point where I. Yeah, listen, I roll in a black V-neck. That's how I roll. You know, mm-hmm. I do I do my speaking engagements in a black V-neck. You're not really going to see a suit jacket. That's just not me. I'm, I'm wearing Puma sneakers, suede Pumas, right, like Run DMC back in the day. You understand? Yeah, dude, I wear my Vans. I tell everyone, I, I'm going to show up in my jeans and my Vans. Is that cool? And people are all 100% of the time, they've been, they've been it, it sets people at ease. It's a, a phenomenal you know, thing to experience. And I challenge any of you out there to go out there and just try it. You'll be scared. You'll be nervous. Be educated. Be intelligent. But be comfortable and be you, whatever that is. If that's a suit, if that's a V-neck and jeans and Pumas, or anywhere in the, in, in the middle. Uh, yeah, don't be a, don't be an asshole about it, though. Yeah. No, yeah, no, 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 no. no. This is like there's con- something different. So- there's something different to, don't you know I'm Greg McDaniel? You can't <laughs> afford me, bitch. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you can't even – I don't even know why I'm – you, how's Kanye say you should be honored that I show up to this fake shit? <laughs> right? I don't you think should I'm be honored, honored, honored by my lateness. That. You should be honored by my lateness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're not. We're not. That is definitely not the approach we want to take. Right. Well, <laughs> oh, yeah, my. but if you tell people to go in and just be and have that, um, you know, I have that uh, that air about me. You know, people can be snarky, and if you're snarky in an interview because you're feeling yourself. The, the the buyer or seller is probably going to taste that and not like it. No, they don't. People like confidence, not arrogance. Very thin line, but that is a that is a that's something you need to keep keep in keep in mind when you're when you're doing this type of stuff. So figure it out yourselves and kind of figure out how, how which which direction you guys want to go. But Gene, I want to talk about I want to get into video and I want to talk about you know so that you can have these conversations and people can already be aware of your presence in the local marketplace. You know, one of the things that you've encouraged me to do and I've talked about it before on the show is I went out and bought and bought a you know uh, uh, with a DSLR. T7i uh, Canon Canon camera, and I'm doing that, and I'm, I bought a light and some other stuff, and I'm doing some shoot videoing and everything else, and it's it's amazing, dude. I've done three videos, and I'm gonna I'm making my fourth right now for the for the local area, and I'm doing the history of Danville. It's insane. People come up to me all the time now, and it's only been two real videos about different restaurants, right? And then I did another one about a surgery center in San Francisco, but you know they're like, hey Greg, and these are clients. Hey Greg. I'm like, I'm like, hey man, what's up? And he's like, I no, nothing about real estate. Hey man, I loved your last video about that restaurant at Scott Seafood. You did such a good job on that. And I'm gonna take advantage of that coupon. Do what is the power long term 
of doing those types of videos into your marketplace. And I believe, and I'm seeing it happen, is that that gives you the leverage and latitude to show up in your natural form because they already are seeing you in your natural form. They're getting, they feel like they're getting to know you. You don't need to get, you don't, you don't need, need to show up and do the dog and pony anymore. You just show up and be you because they are, they already know you. They already feel that they know you, right? Hundred percent. I, I always said, you know, we were talking about this four years ago, that when you, when you are doing video, so back, back, in not in, porn. Right, just you video, normal video. Uh, listen, if you have the audience for it, and those people that are <laughs> like that stuff, I can't say not porn. I can't. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's, there's a space for it. I'm sure. If you got the body um, for it, awful, knock yourself out. <laughs> well, I'm, not, I, I'm, do, I'm done with that one. But, but I used to say this before. There, there was always this. I remember talking to a broker, and the broker had this three-step plan for getting a listing. And the first part of the of the step plan was go out for the feeler interview. So you get a lead, you go out, and that first interview is you listening to their needs and selling yourself and the brokerage to the to the potential lister, right? Let's just use for sellers. And but with social media and video done the right way, now that three step plan becomes a two step plan because if you're doing it right, but when you go out there. They're already sold because they know you. They already know they like your style and your hand movements and how you work. And so now you just can't screw it up. It's your job to go out and listen to their needs and wants and then provide the service after they sign the contract. So when you're prominent in your area and you're capturing eyeballs and you set yourself apart from everybody else, by the time you get that phone call, like, you know, you've had this before, Greg. How did you hear about me? Oh, dude, I've been watching your restaurant reviews for the last year. That's unbelievable. All right, you're done. We're done. We're done. So what do I need to do right now? Just to, let's get this on paper. I came out here to kiss the babies. Make sure you felt good. Let's put it on paper. It that see that's the thing, Gene. You you just took you just went naturally into the next step. You didn't pussyfoot around. And be like, so do you want to work together? No, you're like, all right, fantastic, guys. When do you want to go on the market? It's asking for the business right up front. I was watching another coach. We're gonna get him on the show. And I was, he was uh, referred to me uh, to come on the show. And I'm like, okay, I'll take a look at him. And he's got a really good way about him. And he, he has a, a – I, I won't spoil it. But basically, he just makes life really easy for agents. He, when you're at an open house or anywhere else, don't ask for the information for the people. Just ask them, so do you guys want to buy it? You know, it's asking for the business right off the bat. And it's, it's so true. And a lot of people, I, so I told you about my past clients, you know, I, they've been watching my videos for the last five or six years, however long I've been putting them out. I, they were my clients 16 years ago. I haven't talked to them in 16 years. They apologized to me for them not following up with me, but they've been watching my videos. You know, the guy who I listed his $5 million house, he's been watching the videos. They, you know, another 3.1 heat million listing. He's been watching my videos. It's the power of being omnipresent and always being there, even when you're not there. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, a, it's about recognition. 95%, 97% of the people that see you do an interview or a review today don't need your service. So mm -hmm. in six months when they do need your service, what did you do in the meantime to keep their attention? And it's mailers, it's Facebook ads, it's more videos that they're watching. You got to – the big thing in marketing is always giving people – the consumable media that they want to keep consuming you. That sounded you really bad. That sounded really bad. Did it? Because well, they want to keep consuming you. Mm -hmm. no, you're, you're media. Right. Okay, I, see, <laughs> I see what you're saying. Right? I see what you did. But that's the challenge. That's the challenge. If people go like this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick my next real estate agent from that billboard ad that I see on, on my local highway. Well, if you're not there, you're not getting picked. And if somebody says, I, I really love these newsletters, and the next one that sends me a, a San Francisco 49ers schedule in an email is getting my business, and you're not sending it in your email, you're, you're not getting the business. If, if somebody goes, I love to follow his, his local bar spots online, and you're not the one doing the local bar spots online, you're not getting his business, right? Yep, no, 100%. I had a gal, she's our newest client, her name is Valley. I, two years ago, I gave her, she gave me her email address. I was, she's a, she worked at Safeway, our local supermarket here, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I hadn't talked to her in two plus years. She called me specifically because of the videos, because she felt that after watching the videos, that we were the right team. Now, I didn't know this. She told me this two days ago. Her best friend 
and one of our other close friends are both local real estate agents that didn't wow. even get a call. Nice. Didn't Winning. even get a call. Charlie Sheen. You're Charlie Sheen up in that bitch. Winning. <laughs> <laughs> you associate with Charlie Sheen now? <laughs> I bang Listen. hookers and do blow. All right. Oh, right Jesus. It's been – you've been out on the, on the podcast. Yeah. You have I've been, been out on this podcast. And I think, Matt, if Matt's listening to this, you should cut that and make that a drop. <laughs> no, it's that is hundred percent no. <laughs> God, no. No, horrible. Hey, listen, people, people want to see that they like you, and yeah, yeah, yeah. here's here's the other part of that. A lot of people don't realize that you, when you see something like that, your ROI just on on just doing videos went up so so far, right? It went that, vertical. That you, you pro- you, it did, it did. And, but most people don't do that. Well, they would have called me anyway because actually, dude. She no. told you that she was watching your videos. And here's another thing. You asked, right? She, she either volunteered it or she, she didn't. It. You would have asked. But you would have asked. How'd you find me? Yeah. No, no, no. She's like, hey, Greg, it's Valley. Blah, blah, blah. She explained about everything. She's like, you know, it's right, right in the beginning of the conversation. Like, hey, Greg, it's Valley. I've been watching your videos forever. I need, I need to sell my house. And told me the story, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was like, great. I can went over there, signed the contract, $700,000. Bing, bang, boom. We're off, we're off and running. Here, but people stop with the value add prop because they aren't seeing the instant gratification returns. It's a marathon, not a sprint. It's cliche. Yes, I get it. But the, 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 the message should be loud and clear for you guys. If you're not doing video, that Gen Zer, that little whippersnapper that just joined your brokerage is going to beat you like a redheaded stepchild in marketing if you don't get your ass on camera because they will decimate you. Go, visibility. go back go back to exactly what we talked about we started this episode with patience figure out how much money you can burn over a 45 to 90 day period without losing your house and without losing your business and without losing your wife or your husband and then throw that money at your marketing and design a plan same thing here you're throwing away these video things, it's not costing you anything, Greg, in most cases to put this stuff together, except for your time. So be prepared to burn your time over – your patience is the key here. The longer you're patient with these things, the quick, the, the, the more they'll catch on. Because here's what's reality. Everybody that listens to this podcast has probably done a video. How many people have done 50 videos for 40 days where people are like, yo, all I see is your shit out there? Beautiful. Mm-hmm. That's the purpose of it. So when do you need me to call you? Yes, exactly. You know, my my upline and friend Hank Avick, you know, he talk, talks about patience with a sense of urgency, right? But you know what? Matt and I, when we first started this podcast, we we're like, okay, realistically, legit, you know, lo- logistically, what are we looking at to get any, any traction and visibility? What did Gary V do? He did it in 18 months. Okay, 18 months it is. Put our heads down, deliver content three times a week, you know, every single week, hour-long content. We deliver more content than any other podcast out there, bar none. There's a few that, that compete with us, but we fucking put out epic amounts of content, and that's why we have the viewers and listeners and followers and friends and everybody else out there because we've done the hard work. We dug the well. Now we can, now we can you know, drink from it. That's another Hank Avick you know, you know, little phrase there. But it's true. I mean, guys, there's no quick way to do lead generation. I mean, the stuff that I'm shooting with with these cameras, I've invested about $1,000 into this camera. But it is returning that value to me in spades because I'm using it with the TV show that I'm shooting as a second camera right now. I'm using it when I go out and I produce good content. Then my, my, my team over at Viral will do the editing for me and turn out some really good uh, videos, high quality, totally different than anyone else is doing. So it makes me stand out. It's a small investment one time. And then if you don't have the money, that's cool. iPhones, yep. droids, it's totally fine to shoot with this. You just gotta go out there and shoot with it. I mean, if you don't know who to go shoot in your local neighborhoods, Go out there and go to TripAdvisor. Go to the top things in your city. Go talk to these different you know, places to go, restaurants, venues, all these different places. Interview those people right then and there, and you're done. I mean, it's that simple. I mean, I have a dual lavalier microphone that I got for $17 on Amazon, Gene. My videographer, I showed it to him on Tuesday when we were filming, and he pretty much laughed at me. He's like, ha, what are you going to get the quality of $17 for? But it's a, it's a single input dual mic so i can do an interview off of one input and i'm like bitch just let's try it with our with you know just try it with our cameras 
he and we did it we did an audio test and he was like ha. oh shit <laughs> that sounds really good. I'm like, it's so much better than just listening to the camera by itself, right? Oh, so much better, so much better. Seventeen dollar investment. You plug it into your phone and you're done. I mean, it's you that. You step up your game in increments. That's all. You start with your phone. Then, as you start to realize that it, it it's going to benefit you, then you you buy a nice little camera, and then when it benefits you, you get the mic that goes on it. Like you know, and then you start advertising the video so that as you make money, you throw more money into it and make it yeah. bigger and better. It's all about omnipresence. Look. The, the one thing about real estate or any other business, success is rented, not owned. Because there was Rent a is due every day, baby. Every day. Um, but my point is, like, there was a guy or a gal that was dominating your farm area before you did. There will be a guy or a gal that will dominate your farm area after you're done. You are renting this space for a certain amount of time. It's just up to you how long you rent, want to rent that space. As soon as you say, okay, I want to rent it for 20 years, great, let's roll. There's going to be a big process, but you can't go cheap on, on, on the lead generation and technology. But um, we're coming in hot on the end of this thing. I want to talk about tech and houses super quick, Gene. Um, you, ha you were doing one of your RV marketing uh, podcasts, and you, were, you guys were talking about how Mark – Marketing RV. Mark sorry, I'm dyslexic, okay? <laughs> I For the literally people that, that want to listen to it on iTunes, <laughs> Marketing RV. <laughs> <laughs> Worst plug man ever. Uh, okay. Where's Matt, so, Matt Johnson when you need him? No, he, well, he's he, – yeah, anyways, he's doing him right now. But, you know, talk a little bit about what your conversation – okay, it was episode 24. And then 23 was the predecessor to, to this one because it's a two-part series. But the second one, 20, episode 24 – you talked about technology and some other stuff. You went down a rabbit hole, but it was an interesting conversation to have uh, about what is listening and watching you in houses. So explain that a little bit, and I want to talk about how to avoid some issues. Yeah, everything. Every, everything is listening and watching. You know, I, I listen – you know I'm big on these, like – I love these shows that make you think. You know, I'm a, I consider myself – an educated conspiracy theorist. I love listening to this stuff, but I don't necessarily, you know, some of it's true, I'm sure, and some of it is just hogwash. But I, I always enjoy, it's almost like, for me, it's my fiction novel. I like, I like instead of reading fiction, I listen to these things, right? And that one of the things they always talk about is why has the, and I, I do I think this is true? I doubt it, but it's still fun to think about. If When you see these houses, all these ha houses now have these open floor plans, right? Yeah. So when you're when you move into a, when you buy a house and a house is built from the ground up, in a lot of cases there's remember back in the day there used to be walls with little door openings to get from the dining room to the kitchen. Yeah, so prehistoric. It, big time. Now you don't <laughs> see any of that anymore. It's 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 all wide open, right? Yeah. All the floor new floor plans are wide open. So they say that there's a reason the reason for that is so that your devices like your television with the camera on it can see all the way through your house. Yeah, I've heard that. It's it's yeah. terrifying. Ah, you know what? Look, if you want to know that I'm drinking Ovaltine, all you got to do is ask me. I'll tell you. Like, I don't. You don't have to spy on me for it. And you, what kind? What kind of underwear am I rocking in my house? If you want to know that what that is, so you can sell it to me, just ask me. I, I, Nothing. You know, I, I'm fine with it. I'm so, a commando man. Listen, you have no privacy whatsoever unless no. you're off the grid. You know, and even when you're off the grid, there's still ways for them to track you. You got to be off the grid. Credit cardless paying, paying cash with no cell phone anywhere near you. Those things are on all the time. Whether it's off, they can still track you. Mm -hmm. And I get, and this is not me doing any conspiracy theory. This is all proven stuff. And frankly, I don't care. No, I'm 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 okay with the convenience for privacy factor. I know that I'm giving up all my privacy for convenience. Where I have a problem with it is with my children. Yeah, and with your children, I mean, we did a show a while back about protecting children with technology and how absolutely right. petrifying it is about kind of what goes on out there with children and technology and all kinds of horrible things we're not going to get into because that's not this type of show. But, I mean, it's for real estate agents, when you guys are out there and you're, you're showing properties, look, 15, 20 years ago when I was out door knocking, right, and I would go around from house to house to house to house to house, dude, I'm telling you right now, like I never saw, I saw, I remember there always was one house in Round Hill Country Club that had like four or five security cameras around it, and I thought that was so weird. Now, every single house is going to have a ring or some sort of a security camera somewhere on that property. You are on camera 100% of the time, and Gene, here's a funny story. I totally forgot about that one day. It was a couple of years ago. I was out uh -oh. door knocking. Oh, this is so bad. 
Uh oh. Like I was out door knocking and I was doing a Facebook Live door knocking, right? It's like my, one of my first ones. And I'm out there door knocking and and I'm showing everybody what's going on and the guy, this person doesn't answer the front door and he had a ring. Doorbell. I didn't put that two and two together. Then I saw a boat and I'm like, hey guys, check this out. He's got a really cool boat. This dude came barreling out of that front door like a freight train. I thought I was going to get my ass beat right then and there on the sidewalk. And he, dude, he was so mad at me showing his backyard. And I didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't thinking about it because I was just legitimately interested in the boat because I love boats. Well, from his point of view, I was casing the joint about ready to fucking rob his shit, right? Sure, yeah. And so when you're out with your clients, keep in mind front of the house inside of the house there's going to be cameras everywhere so if you're going to talk shit about the property make sure you step away from the property into the main street or get into your vehicles before you start talking mad crap and just be like yeah this place is fucking busted i gotta go you know these people are crazy because if you then decide to make an offer and they have a recording of you talking shit you're probably not going to get your offer accepted or even looked at right. if you're actually going to be doing that and guess who just yep. joined us? The Johnson I face, see it. Just Johnson. What's what up, up MJ? What up, MJ? Oh, it is good All to right, have so a strong Johnson with us. School's back in session, bro. School? What do you mean? What, that school, means I school? gotta bounce. I gotta bounce. Oh, bitch. Oh, that's right. You gotta go pick up your kiddos. All right. Um, let's do this. Let's get a quick location of where they can find you, Gene Volpe. Dot com. You nailed it. G E N E. V O L P E. Wait 30 seconds for that little thing to pop up, the messenger. Put your info in, and your boy will call you back. Sounds like a deal to me. I've done it, and that's why he's on the show. True story. Uh, it is a true story. Um, uh, for me, guys, if you guys want to do talk about EXP, or if you guys just want to do some free coaching, I'm reopening the coaching um, at no cost. Uh, it is going to be very simple. You're going to just go over to my phone number. You're going to text me at 925 nine fifteen nineteen seventy eight again nine twenty five nine fifteen nineteen seventy eight let's talk about what I can do to help you what resources can I deliver to you um and the very tail end of this gene I'm gonna drop a little little tech tip okay do it have you guys have you guys ever heard of a system called deal machine have you ever heard of it me no so deal machine is a really interesting app go download it and this is the cool part about it Deal Machine is an app that is associated with like Lyft and uh, Lyft and Uber drivers. And when these guys are, and gals are driving all over the place, if they're a part of Deal Machine, what they'll do is they'll take the address and information down of different properties that might be going on the market, like properties that are beat to shit, vacant lots, you know, the list goes down the line. And then you can buy those leads for $1 or $2 per lead. And then you can start doing follow up on properties that you would have no way of knowing about anywhere else. Oh God, so awesome. it's really cool. I, I can't believe where I, where I heard about it from, but I, uh, I just downloaded the app and I'm going to, I'm going to open it up and dive into it. But for a dollar to $2 a lead, who's not going to, who's not going to want to pay that. And then you have to do the follow up. It's very awesome. Very, very cool. And they can make a couple extra bucks and you get to save some dollars. So I love it. There it is guys. That is our show. Gene, I need a bow tie, please. Uh, go with yellow. Yellow. You don't work in the orange. Okay. Yellow. It is. It's a yellow show in Johnson. We miss you, Bubba Cakes. Uh, Gene and I both love you. And we thank you guys for showing up. We would be nothing without all of you. Uh, we will bring back some. We have some incredible guests coming up. So stay tuned. Try to watch us live. If not, go, go to iTunes. Give us a star, five-star review. Until then, peace out, my ninjas. We're gone. <laughs>